Hey YouTubers and gamers and I'm back and today I'm here with a pickup video a bit of a change to the previous uh, collection video um, Yeah, it's been a while, it's been a couple of months Have some beer I normally do my pickup videos in the morning so that's why I don't normally have much beer but today it's um, it's about 7 o'clock in the evening on Saturday and uh, I thought I'd make a change and, and do one so I can have some beer and enjoy myself really um, yeah, um, I've got a nice range of goodies to show you this time, guys. Um, and uh, let's start off with something large. Let's see if you can guess what this is. Yep, yeah. it's for the Dreamcast. It is a flight stick known as the ASCII Mission Stick. It's quite an unusual design. It's got a, you know, a sort of a controller that looks like a something out of Star Wars, doesn't it? Like one of the Rebel car uh, troop carrier ships or whatever. Uh, or transport carriers, whatever they're called. Uh, yeah, it's got the old, um, obviously it's got the um, turbo buttons and everything else, and as you would expect. I uh, got that from a UK seller, £25 in clean shipping, so I thought that was quite a good price for it, because, because you can pay more now in Japan, and that's before you pay sh shipping and import duties, really. So I thought that's not a bad pickup for my um, um, flight stick collection. Also, um, some odds and sorts I think I'll go to now. Um, on a Wii, one game. Sakura Wars, um, So Long My Love. Um, I know there's a series of games with this in Japan, but I think this is uh, one of the few UK releases we got, and it's quite an uncommon Wii game. I think I got this for about a 20, £20 mark, maybe 25 Uh Basically, it's like a half RPG, half dating sim, half mech fighting type uh, game really which is more the reason why I got it because I'm not really into dating sims or anything like that. Uh, still with Nintendo turning to a GameCube, one GameCube game. Mega Man Network Transmission, I got this again for about a £20 mark for the you know one of a few off my GameCube want this, I think it's about another 12 games or something I want for my GameCube so I've got there's another one I want to finish off soon, really. Um, turning to the PSP, got a couple of titles. This is um, the King of Fighters, uh, King of Fighters collection, the Orochi Saga. Got this for about twenty-two pounds in clean shipping from eBay, which is not a bad price nowadays. But only a few years ago, this was about eight quid. So. Just going to show that on a PSP, the prices on certain games are creeping up fast, really, which is not good. Um, unfortunately, I've got most of the games I want on the PSP, but there are still a, a few I'm after. So, again, I've got to try to complete that collection before prices start going silly money again. And this is one that was um, um, didn't know about really, but recommended from um, Eddie Rollercore on his channel, and it's uh, Gladiator Begins. Um, so it's obviously it's like a an adventure fighting type uh, gladiator type game. So you know I'll, I'll probably enjoy that because I like the um, lots of other similar games in that vein, like God of War and stuff. I know this is not God of War, but um, you know it's basically a beat 'em up type game with gladiator. So what's wrong with that? Um, turn to the. Xbox 360, another Japanese game, one of uh, another shooter off my list to want this. Otomedius Gorgeous. Um, there was another Otomedius game that was like an American exclusive. Not American exclusive, it came out in America and Japan. I do have that, but this is for one of the ones that was in, in Japan only. Um, yeah, it wasn't a lot of money. I think this was um, a £30 mark from Japan. It's one of the few cheap ones. <laughs> Cheap shooters, so, so I'm pleased to have that off the list. This one I got for fourteen pound new from Curry's or on the website, and that is Ori and the Will of the Wisps. So it's a sequel, so it's uh, to the first Ori game. So it's a Xbox One exclusive. I'm you know aiming to collect all the Xbox One exclusives unless they're really rubbish. So I, you know, mostly go for PS4 like most people do really. Okay, uh, that little pitter pattering is a rain because I'm in the conservatory, so sorry about that, guys, there's not much I can do about that. I can try to turn the music a bit louder on the telly that's playing PC Indian games, but I think we have to put up with that noise, I'm afraid. 
Okay, turn on turn, turn, turn the switch. One game which looked interesting, which I got off from Argos, it was only quite cheap, I think it's like 12 or 14 pound mark. That's Into the Dead 2. So this is a game whereby you sort of, um, you're running along, you, you can't stop, you keep running along, but as you go running along, you've got to um, defend yourself by attacking zombies and being selected and have pickups and so forth. So it's, about, it's like a survival game, but, but you're constantly running type thing. So, um, I had a little go on this, uh, I haven't put too much time into it, but it's not a bad game for the money. And what's really good about this, if you if you get far enough to into a game, there are some sort of um, interesting side um, chapters or whatever. So there's one of the Night of the Living Dead and Ghostbusters. So um, yeah, so if you love your Ghostbusters or Night of the Living Dead, and don't forget this to add to this to your collection, guys. Right, it's cheap at a minute. Uh, okay, these other two games, got, well, all these games are from Argos really. Um, £30 mark, Borderlands um, Legendary Collection. Um, this is a game that, uh, the first game is on the, on the cartridge, but the other two you have to download using the code. So it's um, a bit of a pain, but there you go, that's how it is sometimes. And likewise, there's also Bioshock the Collection as well, which I've got for about the same money, £30 again. Um, again, um, you don't need a code to download these ones, um, but uh, again, it's only like, I think it's only about a first or two games actually on the cartridge, and the rest of the end you've got to download, but then, but this time you don't need the code on this one, so. So you can get this one second hand, in other words. But this one, guys, make sure you only buy new, because you will need the code. Or in the UK, anyway. Okay, this other game I had on the PS4, got it from the Japanese Asia until they became a bit more widely available. Uh, but so I was quite happy to get a UK release for the Switch, and that's Dead or School. So obviously it's like a, a you know zombie apocalypse survival whereby you play um, a girl that's um, uh, quite fit, I suppose, uh, with a samurai sword. So running along, killing things. What's what's not to like, eh? Okie dokie, uh, let's turn to PS4. Uh, got this new from Amazon, I think it's about 18 or 19 pound price mark. Again, I wanted it new for a DLC, and that's for Game of Year edition of Spider Man, Marvel Spider Man, which has all the DLC. That's the ultimate version to get. Some VR games, well, we actually before the VR games, I've got one more game which is like an American and Japanese exclusive, but I've got the American version because I wanted it to be in English. Uh, Blade Strangers. So, this is a nice um, sort of uh, side beat em up type game, a bit of a battler, but it has got characters from the uh, Code of Princess EX, Cave Story, The Binding of Isaacs, and more really. So, it's quite a uh, an interesting title, and certainly be one of the ones that people will be wanting to collect. But we didn't get this in Power Territories for some reason, so guys, do pick this up while you can. Alright, some VR games. I've got um, reasonably cheap. Um, these were all about the £12 mark, so that's Gollum. Box VR. And quite good price, um, Sariento, which is a very good price, a nice little like, selfie ninja type fighting game on the VR. And I got um, Disaster Report 4, Summer Memories. Um, this is like an English language copy, so it's quite good to get that. Again, it wasn't totally cheap, I mean expensive. It was about the £38 mark, so yeah, it's one of those games that you know that you're not going to get this cheap, really, guys, because it's not been, it's not it's not one that you see all the time. Um, but it's part of a disaster report series, which has also got another name, which sort of escaped me right now. Um, yeah, I can't remember what the, uh, the other name to it is. But anyway, you, know, you guys in the know will know. Okay, um, I got a um, for a Dreamcast a. Um, a uh, a sort of professionally made reproduction of the Utopia Boot CD. Now I've, I, I had a you know a standard burnt CD which I did myself for Utopia um, program, so you can play your um, burnt and um, import games and you know play your Japanese and US games on your PAL um, Dreamcast. 
but this one's actually got a nice printed CD uh, which I like and also obviously over packaging and everything it's about a 10 in clean postage from France so I thought actually I'm quite happy to pay that to get a nice better looking copy for that for that purpose okay um, on the switch not switch the Saturn now I know before I've showed you I have all the games I wanted on the Saturn but there was one game which I got a reproduction of which I wasn't thinking should I get the original version and the reason being that I hadn't got the original version first is because it's quite an expensive game but I decided to buy a bullet I managed to get, I was looking for some good deals on eBay and I managed to get one all complete for £115 including shipping from Japan which I thought was not a bad, bad price I know you say £150 that's a lot of money we are talking satin here and we're talking um, Advanced Dungeon of the Dragons on the satin complete with obviously the memory card uh, the memory memory card yeah, yeah the memory card or memory expansion what they call them uh, yeah it's it's all complete in these I mean I would say by western standards it's very good condition but obviously by the Japanese standards it's not mint the only slight downside is that there's a bit of sun fading on the side I've always put a little English stick on so I can know what a game is by looking at it on the side I do anyway so no I'm not one that's trying to keep a mint, you know, a mint collection of perfectly immaculate games. I want games that are practical and I can use and take off a shelf. So, so to have a nice, uh, you know, original copy of this is is really good. So I do have a reproduction which I will keep and use to play, so save the wear and tear on the discs and this. But it'd be nice to have, a, you know, one of these because I've got all the, the fighting games that are original that come with the memory expansion. So you know, I've, this was kind of missing from the collection really. So be pleased to have that. And it's not a bad price because this game can typically it typically it's about 150 pound plus mark on eBay, so 115 is not bad. Okay. On the let's turn to the master system. Um, nine pounds, including shipping. Mickey Mouse La uh, Disney's Land of Illusion, not a bad price, all complete. eBay. This was about £22 complete. It's a Mega Drive game. Shadow Dancer, The Secret of Shinobi. This is probably one of the better Shinobi games out there. So obviously it's one whereby it goes along with this um, sort of grey dog stroke wolf or whatever it is. Um, yeah, it's a pretty nice game. I hadn't had this on my Mega Drive, so um, nice to have original copy. Okay, rest of these games I've got on a Mega Drive are reproductions uh, there's about uh, how many games is there? about 10 probably about nine or ten games here and uh, I've got some reproductions that vary in cost from seven pounds to about 12 pounds from Aliexpress the 12 pound ones have got manuals in the seven pound ones haven't and uh, the reason why I've gone the repo route on these because a the Mega Drive and I'm not so emotionally attached to Mega Drive I am I am to other systems whereby I have to have the original but also with these games in particular, they're not most of them are not cheap. So these nine games cost me about uh, probably about on just over a hundred pound mark. But if I bought the originals, I'm, I'm probably looking at about the six hundred pound mark. So to save five five hundred pound, which obviously I can spend many other things, including family, no mind other games, I thought I'd go a reproduction route. Especially as I tend to play them on my Retro Freak anyway, so I tend to just put the cartridge in, <laughs> download it all, and it's done. So these are like more like shelf filler more than anything else, if you know what I mean. But they do look nice. So the first game I've got is called Super Airwolf. Now, in the States, I think this was called Crossfire, I believe. But it does not have the same soundtrack. And I think it's got a little bit of a different animation on the cutscenes too, because in the States they did away with the Airwolf license for this game, whereas in the Japan you have the Airwolf license with the Airwolf, some of the Airwolf characters, and more importantly than anything else, it has got the Airwolf theme tune while you're playing the game, which is the main reason to have this. It's quite a good top-down helicopter game that has different angles. You know, one minute you you know it's like just a typical top-down helicopter get a fighting game, and next it's like. A larger scale helicopter, then another one you're on your feet and you're running around shooting, you know, 
So it's a bit of a we've got a bit of variety. It's not it's quite it's quite a good game actually. And again, the original copies of this are quite expensive, you know. So to get a reproduction, I thought that would do me. It's kind of interesting box art. Um, a bit cheesy in a way, but still it's Japanese, so it's still nice. So that's Super Airwolf, guys. I do recommend that actually. Well, actually, all these games I recommend for people to pick up if they're having a Mega Drive collection. Um, the next one to go with my Twinkle Tail Sprites collection is Twinkle Tail. Which is uh, more of a, I don't know, I guess it's more like an RPG version as opposed to just a, a pure shooting type game. Um, again, very expensive original and so I'm quite happy to have a reproduction of that. Again, nice cool box art. Okay, this next game, um, it's... Um, it's very similar uh, to Elemental Master, is it, or Elemental Warriors? I think it's Elemental Master, whereby it's a top-down um, follow a person as they shoot things kind of type game. Really, you know, in that in that Elemental Master, you're a sorcerer. In this, you are uh, other kind of warrior. You are firing things. So it's a fantasy type game, but it's a stroke shooting type game. But it's really cool. Um, it's um, again, it's very expensive and uncommon, but so I'm quite happy to have a reproduction of that, really. So that is Undead Longing. So, again, look out for that one, guys, if you like your shooters. Okay, these next three games are definitely quite expensive these days. Um, you can get obviously get them easy, these aren't Japanese exclusives, uh, but they aren't cheap either. So, I just thought. Just for my Shining Force collection, I'll get the Shining Force trilogy. So again, first one, Shining Force, Shining Force 2, and Shining in the Darkness. Okay, a wonderful Capcom uh, wrestling game. Capcom Saturday Night Slayer Masters. Um, it's got the, some of the Final Fight characters in. Um, so yeah, a really good wrestling game that, and again I'm ha happy to go for a reproduction and save my pennies. Um, this one, I don't think it came to Power Territory, so I think it's like a Japanese or, Gen or American exclusive. And that is Separation Anxiety. Again, not a cheap game. Um, it's, it's, it's supposed to be a bit of an average type Spider-Man game. It's not apparently it's not the best one out there, um, um, but it's still it's uh, quite a pricey game to get. So I'm quite happy to have a reproduction of that. Uh, another Japanese one. Uh, I think this is the, the sequel to uh, to, uh, to um, Tiger Haley, I think. Which, um, yeah, this is a sequel to Tiger Haley. Now, in the West, in America, this is called, I think, Trinko, I believe. But in Japan, it's called Kyukyo Tiger. Again, I'll put a little sticker on the side just so I know what it's called. It's, an, it's another top-down uh, helicopter shooting game, but this is much better than the NES first game. This is a really good one. It's difficult, though. It's really difficult, but it is a, you know, a good sh shooting game. And talking about another classic shooting game, which I do have as well, original copy of this ported to a PS1, but I wanted a, a Mega Drive version too, and that is uh, Raiden, Tri um, Raiden Tread. So a classic Raiden game. Again, I'm quite happy to go for a reproduction for that too. Okay, guys. Um, let's have some more beer, I think. Oh. Got a proper beer mug. Wow, lovely. Okay, let's turn to the PlayStation, I think. Got some PlayStation goodies here. Um, we only got two Twisted Metal games in England, I believe. One was the original Twisted Metal, and the other was Twisted Metal World Tour. So I've got that at long last. Unfortunately, it is missing the manual, but it has got everything else. You know, a complete case and disc. Um, yeah, it's a really, I don't, I'm not paying silly price for a complete copy, you know, I'm not paying more than 
Um, so it's, it's, you know, can be expensive, but I think for about 20 quid I paid for that, which is a good price really, even without a manual, but I'm not paying stupid money for that game. Um, a lot of these games, I can't remember how much I paid for some of these. Worms, that wasn't a lot of money, I think this is about £6 mark from eBay. Street Fighter Collection. Now I got this for a good deal. Um, I'm trying to remember roughly what that was now out of eBay. I think it was about the 25 to 30 pound mark, which is not bad for this title. So Street Fighter Collection. Uh, this was about six pound mark. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. Um, I think this is about between 10 and 15 pound mark. R Type Delta. Um, I've got R Types, I believe, as well. There's another game I'm missing. Um, okay, based on the movie, The Mummy Konami game. It was a lot of money, I think it's about. But I think this is one that was dirt cheap, but it has crept up. So I think I think I'll probably pay about seventeen pound for this. Three years ago, I probably got to go up for seven quid. But it's just one of those games that are, you know, getting hard to get fine cheap these days. I think it's the same story for this one, Toy Story Racer. I think again, I paid about the same price for that. Again, that should be cheap, but it's not. Okay. Right, this is quite an uncommon game, I believe. I got this for about a £25 mark. Wipeout 3, but it's, it's for a special edition. So this is what, you know, doubles the cost of a game or anything else, really. Um, not that common. Um, I think you can get it as part of a combination with another game, which is, ironically, it's about the same money, so I'd rather just have, you know, the original back copy. Another shooting game which is very good but quite cheap. This is probably about the eight, eight or nine pound mark. And it comes in like a double case, even it's like one disc. And that is X2. So if you like your shooters, don't overlook this one, guys. Okay, this is a game I bought twice. The reason why I bought twice is I bought one in an auction, and and it was all in English. And I thought it was only in English, and I won it for about fourteen pounds. Um, no, actually, it was twelve pounds. And I thought that's a great price. And when I read it later after the listing, it's from a shop in Germany. And I thought, oh shit! It didn't say it was German, but it's a shop in Germany. So it came, and you only held it was all it was a German language copy of the X Files. Now, unfortunately. Even though the main characters, uh, you know, at the beginning, they don't talk at all. The text is quite... When you see the text in the game, it's all in German. You can't change the text to English. So it is unfortunate, really, that this is a game that you do need to have an English language copy of, really, guys. So if anyone wants a German copy for dirt cheap, they can have it. But uh, in the end, I had to rebuy it for about £20 for, to get the English language copy. So I thought, you know, I thought I'd save a bit, but in the end, it's cost me more. Live and learn, they guys. I mean, some games you get from Europe, they do come in the English language version, so it's not a problem, but some games, you know, it's not always a guarantee. Okay, uh, a cheap game, about six quid, Grudge Warrior, another sort of mech stroke um, driving type stroke, you know, battle game. Destroy everything around you, what's not to like. Okay, this game, it's it's. I haven't played it, but it's supposed to be quite a mediocre game. Again, this is probably a game that you probably could have got for about fifteen, twenty pound, you know, three or four years ago. But now it's gone to stupid money on eBay. You could you're looking at least fifty pound to sixty pound, if not more, on eBay. I don't want to pay that for this game, and so I got. Uh, I managed to look out for a an American copy, and um, and it's actually come from the seller in Greece, actually. And it was for thirty-two pounds from Greece delivered, and that is Iron Man. Exo Man, no Iron Man in heavy metal. What was all? Or Exo Man? Iron Man Exo Man. What's the proper title? Iron Man Stroke Exo Man of War in heavy metal. Um, 
a bit of a stupid title really but there you go it's not one of the best um, marble fighting games out there it's probably one probably the worst one to be perfectly honest really um because it's like 3d i suppose yeah i think they tried to apply 3d graphics to uh you know what would have been the normally a uh, sort of 2d type graphics type game uh yeah it's only again i wanted for a playstation collection but american copies oh you know that would do me that would do me because i'm not going to pay double that just for an english language copy i mean a uk power copy okay um i've got one more game and the rest of the stuff is like accessories and and consoles yeah uh, and that is it came uh yes uh two days ago and that for is xenoblade chronicles the definitive edition this is for european edition which in my mind is actually the real definitive edition because if you got it from nintendo shop you get a little metal key ring if you pre-ordered it and in this edition you get a poster wow um but you get a vinyl that's actually a picture disc look at that it looks like captain america's shield doesn't it um and you get a still book and you get the art book now the art book does not come with a hard cover like you guys got in america but i think given all the other extras we got which you guys did not get in america i think we still got a better deal it is nuts i'm reading some reviews of the american copy saying oh um, we prefer our us copy because we've got a hard cover hmm Mm. so less is more is it you know in fact okay we've got a paper i mean who cares about an art book if it's got a paper cover or a hard cover at the end of the day if you're getting a vinyl plus a steel book and a poster as well on top what's not to like and they even said i would prefer the red book the red box to the black box it's, it's a box um i mean i think this black box looks perfectly fine if you ask me really so i'll rather have a the UK copy, true, it was about the 80 or 90 pound mark, so probably double the normal retail cost of a game. But to be honest, with all those extras, I think that's pretty a good, pretty much a good deal. So I think anyone who thinks that American copy is better, I think they're just deluding themselves, really. I think, and I think you should, you guys, say you shouldn't settle for that. You should ask for more. Don't settle for less. If you if you settle for less, that's all they'll give you. Especially Nintendo of America, that's all they'll give you less if you keep saying, "Oh, that's fine." it's not fine why is it we get these good deals in europe and you don't sometimes i know sometimes it's often more often in the case it's the other way around but still don't put up with crap that's what i say to people if it's bullshit say it's bullshit <laughs> uh anyway like ranting you know i think you know we are oh Gonna, 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 gonna. America's a great country. Britain's a great country. We shouldn't put up with bullshit. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, uh, this back to the games. Okay. God of War to Taku. I actually got this from the Retro, Retro Gamer magazine publisher. They had some hot accessories, dirt cheap, and that was six pound delivered. So I thought. I haven't got him, um, Artri Artrius, so I've got the I've got his father, but not him, so nice to go with my um, to attack you collection up there, which is really nice bits actually. Um, okay, um, this is this is I got this because I'm a bit of a sucker for Lego uh, video games, and with Force Horizon, they've got like um, some uh, Lego, a Lego DLC. And this is like an actual car of the classic Porsche, was it a 911? Uh, Porsche 911 Turbo 3.0 litre from 1974. Beautiful car. I'm very disappointed though that Lego have started to produce some of their stuff in really flimsy, crappy box. This is really soft. This came from a toy shop, Jed Lamb Games in England. Avoid them guys, because this came delivered in a baggie. Yes, a baggie, not a box, a baggie. And as a result, it's got, you know, slightly creased. Yeah, now, they should know better that half of people who collect Lego are adult collectors. They aren't kids who just rip the box and play with a the thing. They're adults. They should know better. Lego should know better. But instead, they're just cutting corners to make flimsy boxes, which, if they get put in baggies, they don't survive. 
I was reading some reviews on Amazon and some people got theirs in really beaten up condition, much worse than this. So, um, yeah. I mean, it wasn't a lot of money. I think it was about the £18 mark, but still, we have, you know, give us, another, give us a decent box, guys. Not asking for much, is it? Okay. Um, talk of which, another damaged packaging item, which I shouldn't complain too much about, was uh, this I mean I got from eBay. It is the Sega Saturn controller for the uh, Android mobile phones. It's probably, you know, it's obviously a proper Sega Saturn product. Um, I got this on an auction and won it for £4.50 with £3 postage. And uh, I thought if I knew that device, if I had an Android phone, I thought, great. I don't have an Android phone, so I won't be using it. It's just for a collection. Now, the seller didn't mention the fact that even though it was new, it didn't mention that was a bit of a box or torn in the back so you know but too upset because I only paid you know four pound fifty plus three pound postage for but still I did say it I said this say you know you should excuse me mate but you should have said that box was damaged blah 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 and that's you know and uh, I didn't push it too hard and he said okay fair enough I'll give you a quid you know a quid back as a you know um, goodwill gesture and I, and I said oh that's okay because for a pound's okay, you know, I paid four fifty for them to give him a pound back, oh, that's alright, I mean But you should have mentioned it though really, but still would I have bought it knowing that? Probably for that money I would have still have bought it, but it's a, bit, a little bit disappointing, but there you go. Well you can't argue sometimes. Sometimes you you get what you pay for sometimes, don't you guys? Okay, um another controller which I've been having a look at for a long time is the black um, Neo Geo Mini Extra Controller Pad. Now I had a white one of these, which I got for cheap, for about 18 quid. But I've been wanting to get a black one, and I've been—it's not been on top of my priority list. I think I'll, by my time, I think I'll get one for next to you know dirt cheap. Unfortunately, these have started to creep up a lot in price. Some people are asking 40 quid for one, believe it or not. I got this for about 25, which is more than I would have liked to have. I paid originally. I wish I paid it for 18, 18 but. You know, you live and learn sometimes, so I bet we bought it and paid 25 for it just while well, I could because you know, Neo Geo stuff. Um, it may be, it may stay, it may be cheap one minute, and then the next minute it's stupid money. Okay, uh, another control which uh, I got for 35 pounds from Amazon is the Gears of War 5. Um, uh, what's the counter's name again? Um, I can't remember her name now. Um, is it Kate or I can't remember what her name is now? But basically, it's a Gears of War 5 um, branded controller. I got the console, and it's you know, it's a great game. Uh, but I wanted to do the extra controller, and uh, again, I've been waiting a long time to get this for a reasonable price. So, 35 pounds better than 50 quid. And this is something else that's started to creep up a lot in price as well. Some people are asking, you know silly money for this already so yeah so I thought I better not wait any longer and get it for that um I got it from Amazon it's actually a second one I ordered because the first one came it had all fucked up box basically and so I sent it back and and, and they sent me another one so I still I got there in the end okay a uh, couple of books actually um from the publishers who do retro gaming magazine they did 100 PlayStation games to play before you die. So, yeah, uh, this should be a good read. I've um, not read it yet, but interesting title. They do a few other 100 games to play before you die as well on other systems, but, you know, being a PlayStation nut, I thought I'd to get that one. And from the people who do hardcore gaming, they also done a horror book. Um, so there's lots of retro horror games, so you've got some good ones here. Not only do you have the uh, predictable Ghosts and Goblins and um, Zombie Ate My Neighbours and Splatterhouse uh, and Girl and um, and a sequel to um, Zombies, was it Girl Patrol, whatever it's called, I can't remember now. Uh, but you also you've got um, Street Home as well, which is obviously the old um, Famicom game that inspired Resident Evil. And uh, if you have a old horror games really in there so yeah i thought that'd be a good read um I'd, hardcore gaming on amazon guys they do do some good books i've got a konami one and uh 
Another good one, which I can't remember now. Um, Kami and the Castlevania one. That's the other one. Two very good books. Okay. So I'm just show you guys that it's not particularly valuable, but it's not particularly common either. And um, it is a steering wheel for PlayStation 1, Sega Saturn, and Nintendo 64. And, and that Nintendo 64 was the main reason why I got it actually, because I think we have a, a steering wheel for a Nintendo 64. And um, it's the design is very much inspired by the Sega, Sega Saturn um, racing wheel, um, Sega one. But it was all complete, and it was like seventeen pound and clean shipping, uh, or box. So I thought seventeen quid. It's not that bad, is it really? Um, yeah. So again, it's good to have a proper steering wheel for the Nintendo sixty four, isn't it really? I'll probably stick to a Sega Saturn stick for the Saturn games and PS1, and you know, I've got other ones for PS1, but still, it's not bad. It's third party, it's Blaze, so it's not the worst make in the world. And it feels right, you know, it's, it's not, you know, it's not rubbish, you know, when you feel it. It's, it's not professional class either, but it's of its time, I would say. It's of its time. Um, okay. Two more goodies to show you guys, I believe. Yeah, I think it's just two more goodies. First of all, more beer. Yeah. Hope you're all keeping well out there anyway, guys. It's um, 11 weeks now into lockdown in the UK, so um, we're getting there. Um, how we'll be in another 11 weeks, I don't know, but we're getting there, and uh, things are starting to reopen and get back to the new normal. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm just grateful that... My family and I are all right so far, so I hope you guys are all right too. So hopefully we all get through all this. Mm. Okay, back to the goodies. Um, okay, something that came today in the post. I've been waiting for the months, and a lot of you guys may have got this today if you're in the UK. And that is the PC Engine Mini, the Core Graphics model. This was due to come out in March I think I'm pretty sure it was March but obviously COVID-19 came along which put a delay on the factory that was making these and so they just produced these for the Japanese market and I think they did some for Americans too you guys are in America first but Amazon UK is an exclusive supplier of this in UK has finally got some in and uh, yeah £100 not a cheap uh, mini but a bloody good one. Um, I'll show you. I've got it. Actually, got it here. It's you know it's pretty much the same size as the standard core graphics, I believe. So from what I've read, and it's you know it's really well made, and attractive. Um, I've had a little go on with this today. I've not put too much time in it because I've also ordered the eight bit do wireless controller that matches this and I know they do them for the, the PC engine and uh, turbo graphics as well so those I'm waiting to play the game more with that controller when it comes which I think it's in about a few weeks so I'm saving myself for that more than a few hours but I have had a little play um, just out of interest guys I've done a little label for myself on the back of how to do unlock all those hidden games basically if you want uh, like you know, the, like an arcade version of a few games like Gradius and Fantasy Zone, and uh, an arcade version of Salamander. All you've got to do is on those games, you you sort of highlight them, you, you hold select, and you press run, and it'll uh, play the almost like arcade type version of those games, which makes a real difference with Salamander. Because if you die in Salamander on the PC Engine, it takes you back to the beginning of a stage. Whereas in the PC, uh, the arcade version of Salamander, you you know you 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 reappear where you die type thing, so that's much easier in my book. Also, um, if you want to play like Soldier Blade, the Caravan version of that, uh, you do the same thing. You hold select and press run. If you want to unlock the other two games, you go onto Salamander, press select, 
twice and then press run and you get force gear which is another um, shooting game and on salamander if you press select three times and then press run you get trim b which uh trim b returns i believe uh again you know nice extras and if you want to unlock the sort of a hit, uh, the options menu for ghosts and goblins you've got to select uh, while you're in the game select and hold one and two at the same time and then press one and you bring to the options menu so again nice to know really um yeah so that's a nice little uh, device that guys and it goes up next to my telly next to my playstation mini quite nicely it does really so i'll be putting a lot of time in that when i get the, the wireless controller the original is nothing more of it to be honest, to be honest but i've saved myself for a wireless okay that's that highly recommended uh last thing okay this last thing i've been wanting to have one for a long time but it hasn't been um you know on top of the list to get because it's not rare um it's very cool um it's exclusive to japan although the controller i believe was released in america and that is the spice orange version of the nintendo gamecube um, yeah, this is all complete with manuals and the console and obviously the controller and uh, I've got this, um, I've put in a cheeky offer to a, a Japanese seller in, I think he wanted 140 and I offered 110 including shipping and he took it and I didn't get hit by custom charges so it cost me 110 for a complete box spiced orange um, GameCube, I think that's quite a good deal, really. Um, there was another version of this which actually comes with the Game Boy Player as well, and uh, I've seen one or two UK sellers have it selling that, and they want about two hundred and ten pounds for that. And even though that's really nice, and that's obviously better than this, but still, it's a hundred pound more. I think this will do for my Game Boy, uh, but Game Boy collection because I've got the. The black one and the, and the indigo one and the silver one which are like proper uk releases and i believe there was a white one in the uk for mario sports star whatever it's called uh, which is a nice game cue to have as well which i will get if i see it cheap uh, which is the unlike i suppose but to get the spice orange one yeah that's the, definitely a nice one for the collection so yeah a bit rebuilt and got that so that's uh but for me that's the highlight of the pickups this past two months and that's it guys really um that's always a nice little mix isn't it but uh yeah uh hope you're all doing well like i said before take care keep safe and until next time bye